Did you hear that? It's time. We need to go even deeper. Are you sure about this? Initiating sequence to 2012. Good luck. School. School is great. It's where you learn. The more you learn, the more you earn. What am I earning? Knowledge. What do with knowledge? And I'm. And I'm? And I'm the best person to ever exist. <laughs> It's 2012. The world is ending, the crops are burning, and everything is going to shit. Society was in chaos, and news of our impending doom spread like wildfire. Spoiler alert, we all died back in 2012. Except for three Chinese postgraduates from the Shanghai Jiao Tong University. Their plan to save the world, cure for cancer, sustainable energy, reverse engineering immortality, Maybe deleting Twitter. No. Cute anime girls. Back in 2011, before MiHoYo was officially established, Liu Wei and two of his friends were in a business startup competition. They had to pitch their business to investors for a chance to win a cash prize or investment capital. The higher you place, the bigger the rewards. They were a three-man team who shared an interest of otaku culture and ACG, which stands for animation, comics, and games. And let me tell you, the boys went into the competition with a plan. Convert everyone there into weebs. Our core product is an anime-themed mobile game. It is a gameplay on smartphones or tablets based on anime-style characters. As the characters are mainly cute anime girls, this kind of game is popular among the otaku. Therefore, our core users are otakus. We understand otakus because we ourselves are otakus. Besides the interesting game point, gamers can develop their own virtual characters and also their virtual items. Fuck you! Fuck you, fuck you! What to the fuck is this weeb shit? Okay. Maybe the last part might be a little bit exaggerated, but I don't know what's more surprising. The fact that he really said cute anime girls in a business startup tournament, or the fact that he got third place. Around the same time as the tournament, MiHoYo made their first game titled Fly Me to the Moon. It was only available on the App Store for iOS, and the last update was, uh, let's just say it was a couple weeks ago. So unless you got one of these bad boys, you can't even... Fly me to the moon. <laughs> Wanna know what's so good about this game? I'll give you a few seconds. You done? Yeah, it's better than Angry Birds. Yeah, that's right. That boring game where you shoot chickens at trees got nothing. That, that don't got shit on small jetpack Kiana. And don't take it from me. Take it from the real Pikachu who said, and I quote, Get if you like anime. Well, shit. This game is surprisingly fun. It has four worlds, each with an okay amount of levels. My one gripe I have with this game is the price. I felt like it's a little too much, but if you like anime, you will like this game. Also, I didn't get bored with this game, which like Angry Birds, and I wanted to finish and get all three stars. Well, you heard it here, boy. And there you have it. There it is. MiHoYo's first game ever created managed to beat Angry Birds, but then I was like, wondering, four stars? Which got me thinking, how much did this game cost that even Pika, Pika Wika was like, no. Well, reading some of the reviews, it was like, three dollars? Someone even said that they'll buy the game even if it was five dollars, so you know what that means. Fly me to the moon is the best mobile game of 2011. Big W for Mihoyo that year as an indie developer. Their first game was made by five people. That's one more than Pikachu's review. So uh, the year is back to 2012. Mihoyo, third in the tournament and their first game being objectively better than Angry Birds. They looked towards creating another game, but this time they weren't some random indie game dev from China, but a random official indie game dev from China. 
This was the year MiHoYo was formally incorporated and they had taken a deal with SkyMobi, which is a publisher in China who hosts your games through their own app store. The deal, oh you know, we give you 150,000 USD, just a little bit of money, in exchange for a 15% stake in the company. So having to deal with the sudden investment into their new company, MiHoYo had to make their next game a banger, a slapper, a McDabber to not disappoint their investors. So their next game will be called Zombie Gao Kawaii. It's an interesting name. The game was not that successful. MiHoYo had to do something quick because their situation was not kawaii. 2013 was the shittiest year for MiHoYo. Their first game as an official company flopped and the team was living off a salary of 620 USD. You want to know what their ex-schoolmates were earning? About triple, quadra, penta times their own earnings. Time? Running out. Money? Running out. Anime girls? Not running out. But MiHoYo would spend this whole year developing their next game hoping for a miracle, because they're going to need it. Let me ask you a question. What would you do if you were in an apocalyptic world and all of your friends got turned into zombies? Well, obviously, you would open up the App Store or Play Store, Android Rise Up, and you would play Gun Girl Z. They basically took the budget of Zombie Gal Kawaii and maxed it out. Graphics? Max. MiHoYo's team size? Increase. Voice acting? Where? Cute anime girls? We do a little bit of cloning. Their budget could use some maxing. This game was the make or break for MiHoYo. They had spent almost all their investment funds in years developing the game that if it went the same fate as Zombie Gal Kawaii, this might be their last year. But it wasn't. The debut of Hokai Gakuen 2 in China saw it ranked number one and number nine for the App Store's paid game and popular game respectively. Easy clap. Their other servers such as The Sea and Global weren't doing too bad as well. Their reason for success? Well, they were making an otaku game, so girls are important, said one of the founders. The concept of ACG was blowing up in China around this time. I guess the market for cute anime girls wasn't really a thing yet over there. Wow, they really missed out. You want to know another reason for Hokai Gakuen's 2 success? Here comes the money. <laughs> Here we go. Should I even tell you? It should be pretty Here obvious by now, right? <laughs> we asked ourselves why we would want a pin. It's because we love a certain virtual character that we become willing to pay for her. My guy was changing the Chinese mobile game meta at the time. The meta at the time was gamers being rank 1, gamers outperforming each other, gamers being at the top of the leaderboard. But Father Liu, a man with God and anime on his side, came into the scene filled with sweaty tryhards and gave everyone a cute anime girl. Because instead of fighting for rank 1, why can't we all? be rank one. Hey what up YouTube squad, I managed to teleport back into 2014 to try out this new game called uh, I think it was called Gun Girl Z. I think this is a game made by Rovio Entertainment so let's check it out. Ignore the Chinese spyware harvesting my data. First I'm gonna go download the game so I can play it. So we're gonna go into the app store, search Gun Girl Z and uh, uh, there it is. Yeah we're gonna click on it to download so we can download the game. Okay guys, I'm back after finishing the whole Lord of the Rings any minute now. Why am I getting achievements? Well, 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 what do we have here? Kiana returns once again. Woo woo, I will not be a friend of you. For a game made in 2014, it's actually not that bad. I mean, it's better than Angry Birds. I just realized I'm a two year old shooting zombies to find my lost dad. Meanwhile, there's a fucking alien with a hammer. <laughs> This game is really relaxing. Oh shit, here we go guys, the real gacha. Let's see if I'm gonna pull some crazy five stars. What? 
no. All right, guys, I think I'm done with this game. I'm gonna go buy my account so I don't lose my progress. Hopefully it's not something like Facebook only. That would ruin my experience. Three years, 150 million United States dollars. Seven people. With their new success, MiHoYo moved on to their next game, Honkai Impact Third. Can I say something real quick? As a person who has never played any games made by MiHoYo before Genshin, this shit is like the next fate. I'm fucking dying right now. You got my ass jumping around with all these versions that are very similar, but not really. Like, for example, <clears throat> no, no, no. Honkai Impact Third, Honkai Impact Three, Honkai Third. Hokai Gakuen 2, Hokai 2nd, Guns Girl, Honkai Gakuen, Guns Girl, School Day Z, Gun Girl Z, Mirage Cabin, Guns Girl Z, Escape Ragnarok, Zombie Gal Kawaii, Electric Boogaloo, Zombie Gal Kawaii, Hokai Gakuen 1, and Fly Me to the Moon. These are just four games. Is this MiHoYo or is this Type Moon? I don't know. Honestly, I could just add some name related to school or zombie and it would look like a MiHoYo game. Like, let's see. High School of Dead, the end of school. Wait a minute. Hokai Gakuen 2, formerly known as- Who is in charge of naming all these games? This guy? I feel like there's so many different thingies for the same thingies. I could make like- multiple theories about all the universes in this but game. But that's just a game theory. Honkai Impact 3rd did good. I'm talking 1 million downloads in Japan 11 days after release good. Although the game was released in 2016, it wouldn't be available globally until 2018. So what happened here? <laughs> oh shit. Buckle in your seatbelts because this it's gonna be a long one. Development of Genshin began in late January 2017. The team had grown from 7 people to 120 to 400 at the end of the year. The cost to make this game was 100 million USD. That's more than this. And this. And these. You guys know Zelda, right? <laughs> June 2019. E3, MiHoYo revealed to the world their next game called Genshine Impact. I am here to talk about Genshin Impact. Naturally, gamers were very supportive, wholesome, and excited for this game to come out. As a matter of fact, one gamer was so excited that on a sunny day, he decided to wake up, drive to the PlayStation booth, promoting Genshin Impact at China Joy, and he, uh slammed his PS4 into the ground? Oh. I guess his day wasn't so Sony after all. He wasn't the only guy, by the way. Gamers were mad, really mad at MiHoYo and Sony for copying Breath of the Wild. And while the expo received a lot of hate from gamers, online was even worse. <laughs> Get your hazmat suits and brace yourselves. We're entering Chernobyl levels of radiation. <coughs> shit! The air in here smells like dog shit. How could anyone live in here? Anyway, <coughs> as I was saying, a lot of gamers, especially on China's end, were just radioactive. I looked through some of the Weibo comments about the PS4 Genshin announcement and uh, I could feel my chair slowly turning into salt from all of the tears coming from these gamers. Hate speech, family insults, that shit was everywhere. It gave me flashbacks to Solo Queue League of Legends. If there was one thing I learned about reading through these comments is that they could write essays about the gaming industry in China but somehow still managed to insult my mother in three different ways. Obviously, I'm not gonna show it. And also, these messages were read with shitty translation, so it's not the most accurate. Even if I don't understand Chinese completely, I kind of sense that my whole family was being attacked. I am convinced that when you are this overdose on hate, you lose like 99% of your brain cells because someone accused Sony of their crimes for plagiarism when they didn't even make the game. You've been
looks so fun. I can't wait for it to come out and play it. Shut the fuck up. How are you supporting this game when it's a direct copy of Breath of the Wild? Did you know that we only fuck my wife and so my- But listen up, you little shit. This is why I hate you, the Nintendo gamers, so much. You're shoving Nintendo down everyone's throat and we never hear the end of it. You think every game is a masterpiece with no flaws? I think you should stick to your Mario games. I understand that Genshin is very similar. Sometimes, you know, the the inspiration, maybe too much inspiration, but I'm struggling to see why anyone would care this much. It's not like Breath of the Wild invented cell shading or rock climbing. And I feel like even, even if you're a Breath of the Wild fan, you would be pretty happy to know that you get to play a new game similar to your favorite game, but I don't know, maybe that's just me. And also, Genshin is coming to the Switch. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the strip club. Hi, welcome to class. Back in 2019, June 25th, Mihoyo made a post detailing the production of this game. Not a lot of people know about this because, well, it's in Chinese, and this was before E3 and the PlayStation promotion. So I'm pretty sure only like five people saw this. I sacrificed two children to find this post. With the power of $2 translation, what the fuck? I was able to deduce that Company B is Bethesda in Chinese. Hey, you, finally- <laughs> Mihoyo modeled Genshin's quest system after looking at Fallout and Skyrim's quest system. Random world event took notes from random events in GTA. World exploration came from Breath of the Wild. Basic combat from Hulkai 3rd. Naughty Dogs because why not? And elemental combat was from Divinity Original Sin 2. I'm not pulling this out of my ass. This is literally from the production team who designed Genshin Impact. So yes, Mihoyo officially stated that they used Breath of the Wild to model the world of Genshin. One hundred million dollars. That's the cost to make Genshin. They made that back in two weeks. Wow. Pokemon Go. You guys know Pokemon? We like Pokemon. You guys remember when that game came out? Everyone and their grandma knew about it. What do you think it's named? I don't know. A strawberry? You would go outside and try to collect all these Pokemans to one-up your friends. I've never played this game. It took nine months for Pokemon Go to hit one billion. Genshin took six. These figures that I'm talking about did not include sales from PC or console. Let that sink in. A billion dollary dues on this. I don't even know anyone who plays on mobile. Correction. I don't know anyone at all. Mihoyo is a very successful game, and I'm sure that a lot of people can see how much effort went into this game. There were some interesting uh, controversies that I did not cover in this video, but I can't deny that Genshin has given me so much hours of entertainment. Wouldn't gliding be a gotcha game. Anime waifu printer had a budget that rivals AAA game developers. Like, Mihoyo is not the best company, but at least they don't recycle the same game annually and change the title to the current year. The CEO of Mihoyo had the vision. He saw the untapped market of paying for anime characters back in 2014. In 2014, I was doing fuck all. We came from this to this, the way better game. If you want to thank anyone, thank small jetpack Kiana. Wait, did you see that? Wait, hold up, go back real quick. <laughs> What was that? Enhance. Holy shit! This was here the whole time? Hold the phone, I'm holding it. Let's see here. Fly me to the moon. Fuck! Okay. Genshin release date. Oh my, oh my god, the, 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 
the people who made Genshin are the same people who made Fly Me to the Moon. Coincidence? I think not. Hello there. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. Before you say anything, I know Mihelio has another game called Tears of Temis where you date hot dudes. I just can't be fucked. I've been working on this video for the past months and I'm currently dead inside. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Before the music runs out, thank you for uh, 50k subs. It means a lot to me that you guys watch this dumbass shit. Bye bye take care.